Hey guys, it's Jeff and Jeff here with the AutoWrecking.com Studios, LOL. Hey, uh, we're here with a 2012 Ford Power Stroke 6.7 uh, in a real live working environment. And a cool question was brought up to uh, JJ, aka Jeff, uh, and myself earlier from a newer seller about the difference between independent front suspension and uh, solid axle. What a 440 is versus a 434 some of the different components that make up each. So we thought we'd just spend just a quick minute and kind of show you the difference um, and give you kind of some of the common nomenclature. There are several different words used for the same components in automotive, depending on who you're talking to. Um, so we're gonna kind of try to talk about some of those and differentiate uh, what those are. So JJ, wanna tell us a little bit about this F350? First, what we're gonna show you is a solid front axle setup. Here, as you can see, the axle is built on a single tube with the third member somewhere in the middle of the tube. This is where the gears are kept. This is your differential on this vehicle. The main differences between an IFS and a solid front axle are gonna be your steering components and the way that the carrier is held inside the vehicle. Like I said, this is on a solid tube. On these steering components, we're gonna start with the Pitman arm here, if you can get in there, Jeff. Okay, so the Pitman arm is connected directly to the steering gear box. box. So that's the 551. So on a truck, it's a steering gear box. On a car, the 551 is a steering gear rack. Kind of hard to see, but the Pitman arm is what connects that to this drag link here. We don't sell a lot of these, but you will get some people asking for drag links. Some people call it a pan hard bar, KJ. Some people call it a pan hard bar. Okay. Here we have our idler arm. This is your idler arm going. This Cross. keeps the wheels so that they're both moving in the same direction and not side to side. And where's the we tie also, rod ends, JJ? This one is gonna have tie rod ends built into the end of the pan, of the idle arm. And the pan hard bar too. And the pan hard bar. This okay. is how they adjust. Notice there's no upper and lower control arms here. Um, you do have coil springs. The, on this vehicle, we have coil springs and radius arms that keep the axle bolted to the vehicle. Sometimes radius arms, like on Dodges, uh, will be considered control arms. They might on these trucks as well, um, but on Jeep Wranglers uh, and um, uh, like some Ford Broncos, the big Broncos and some of those F-150s with the twin I-beam front suspensions they had, uh, they call those control arms. They're also uh, in, in Powerlink, but their, their, their actual name is radius arms. So that is this arm back here uh, that goes uh, back to the frame um, So sometimes you do find those under 511 and 512 if you hear somebody call and say that thing had four link suspension A lot of time what they're talking about is four radius arms on older vehicles just to note Jeff If this vehicle had a leaf sprung setup, you're not gonna have radius arms Your leaf springs are gonna take the position of the radius arms. Okay, and just so we're all speed on what that is so here's your leaf spring so these are in the back on this vehicle so this has leaf spring rear with coil spring front uh, coil spring front uh, design was uh, noted I think for just a better ride quality absolutely okay. much more comfortable okay so this bar here up here is a sway bar uh, these are the sway bar bushings uh, these are sway bar bushings here as well uh, the big deal here is you can see when people are doing this solid front axle, um, if they ask for a front differential, which you might be thinking 440, Hollander part number 440, most people, it's so much work to swap these gears out and there's kind of a lot of specialty equipment needed to do that. So most people will just go with the entire 434. That's how we sell it. Uh, Cause it's easier to replace this whole unit than it would be to pull these gears out. Um, there's kind of a weird exception to this rule. Uh, Toyotas and Nissan trucks have what they call a dropout 440 with a solid axle. Uh, that's unusual, but it does happen. I believe a Ford 9 inch is like that as well. Yes, sir. Is that correct, JJ? Ford 9 inch also has the dropout where the bolts are not gonna be on the front, but they're gonna be on the back. Good point. Okay, so this is a solid front axle. This is a 434. So uh, with that, let's cruise over and look at another design. Uh, we're gonna look at a- uh, 2003 Ford Explorer. 
JJ's a Ford guy, so don't hold that against him. So we've got a Ford Explorer here. This is what, um, again, this all started with the difference between a 440 and a 434. So this here is a 440. So this is an independent front suspension. This is a 440. Um, this is, in essence, the same thing that, that that gear, those front gears on that solid tube were doing. Um, this is just, uh, it comes with um, independent front suspension. So this 440 uh, carries out 447s here, which are not part of the 440 assembly typically. So you have 447s here, left and right. JJ, what are some of the other main components that we're looking at here? So the main components here are gonna be the ability of the vehicle to operate independently on the left and right wheels. We have our upper and lower A arms that operate separately on both your left and right sides. So did you notice how he just called them A-arms? So that's another way of saying control arm, but you'll hear that a lot from your customer. Hey, I'm looking for an A-arm for an Explorer. Well, that's, that's just another way of saying control arm. Okay, great, go ahead, JJ. This can be inventoried independently as separate items or as one 510 or what we call a knee. So you could, it could be a 511 and a 512 or it could be a 510. The other thing you'll notice here, what do we have here, JJ? Here we have a McPherson strut where the spring and the strut are one unit. Okay. On an independent front suspension, that's gonna be very typical. Also, one of the main differences is instead of having a steering gear box, this has a steering gear rack. If you can get up under here, Jeff. Yep. This has a gear rack, like your typical front wheel drive vehicle. Okay, so we've got the steering gear rack here, with the tie rods here. This is the steering gear rack. This is the bushings, or the boots, excuse me, for the steering gear rack. You've got your strut back here, your CV axle here, your 447. You've got your lower control arm. Up there you see your upper control arm. Uh, that whole unit there we would call a 510, uh, kind of this whole uh, unit here. Behind that's the rotor, obviously, and the caliper. Uh, but you can see this 440 uh, drops out separately, whereas the other one you have the entire uh, the entire unit being replaced. Uh, this car being the way that it is, it's got a, a crossbar, not a 477, which would be a, a subframe, K-frame. Um, but this would typically be where you would see that unit. So uh, that is, in essence, the difference between uh, independent front suspension and a solid axle. Yes, sir. Thank you, JJ, for your time today. all points. If you have any questions, let us know. We appreciate it. And uh, hopefully for those that didn't know or need a little bit of a better explanation, this helps a little bit. You can always reach out, and we appreciate your feedback. Have a great day, everybody.